everybody welcome back I'm going to get into that video for you now and the very first one I'm going to be doing is a flawless base foundation this can be the start of a daytime look an evening look or anything in between so I have just a few products here I think there's about six here so let's get into that video so I have a few products that I have here that I um, essentially use for my full flawless base. Um, there's, I am an oily skin type, so these are particularly for an oily skin type. You can use these on your dry combination or anything in between, but they're not essentially going to work the same. I will explain those products as we go along. So I'm going to start very quickly um, with my primer. I use the Rimmel Stay Matte Primer. Um, that's just here. It's actually a cream that converts into a powder. I essentially really like this when I'm really oily. DAC has an amazing primer that they have. It's a um, like a gel based primer. Perfect for oily skin. Perfect for filling in those lines. But unfortunately, I don't have any left. So I'm going back to the good old trusty Rimmel Stay Matte Primer. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of that out. I don't like to go all over my face with this type of primer um, as it is very drying. This one actually dries into a powder, so I don't want to go too far around those edges where I'm going to dry them out essentially. So I just rub that in between my fingers as so, and I just position that in my T-zone, particularly where I am that little bit oily. I'm just getting it into there as well, making sure I go around my nose correctly and I get a tiny little bit dry on my chin. Oh, sorry, tiny bit oily on my chin. All right, wonderful, that's on. The next step I go in with, um, and just so you know, I've done a lot of research in these few products that I have here about working together. So whereas... Um, you know, you might try a primer and a different concealer for one time and they don't, they collide and they don't necessarily work together. That can happen. Um, I always let my girls know in the studio that I work really, I do a lot of research um, in making sure that products work together. So I always make sure that I've tried it and tested it on particular skin types as well. So I make sure that when it states as if for a dry skin primer, I always make sure I try it on somebody who's got dry skin. I don't just read the blurb on the back of the bottle and chuck it in my kit. I actually do um, a lot of research to make sure that they're suitable for everybody and also that the products work together. So I, I ensure that the primer that I use actually works with that foundation that I'm going to use as well. These products have been all tried and tested together to ensure that they're going to work and they don't slip or slide or cake very easily. Um, they work brilliantly together. So we'll get on to those as well. Okay, so the next step, sorry my hair's out of the way. I'm somebody who loves tying my hair up when I do my makeup and getting it completely out of my face. Um, I can't sit here and do makeup with my hair over my face and moving it around. It's really quite frustrating. And because I'm a blondie as well, I ensure that my hair is back out of my way. Um, I'm getting some foils this afternoon, so I'm looking forward to getting rid of those um, that dark regrowth that's coming through. Um, but back to what I was saying, I am a blondie, so I do ensure that all my hair is pulled out of its way, out of my way, because you know how you get that orange hairline as well. So I definitely make sure it's out of the way. Okay, with my primer, I've done my priming, primed all around here. If I'm a little bit dry around these outside edges, um, I will go in with like a hydrating primer, but today they're not too bad, so I'm just gonna go straight ahead with my foundation. And I'm using, dun dun dun, the DAC Studio Cover Foundation. It is amazing, super, super full coverage amazing 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 coverage it actually dries really quite quickly so um the coverage on it is phenomenal so you do need to work a little bit quickly i always tend to do one side anyway and then move on to the next and then the next portion of my face anyway so i move quite quickly along my face but ensuring that that one section is completely blended um and ready to go before moving on to the next Another thing I love about this foundation is the color range. Um, there's 14 different, sh uh, 15 different shades of foundation um, in this color range. So ranging from somebody who's the palest of pales right through to the darkest and deep tones. It is a it tends to be a yellow based foundation. So a lot of the shades are quite yellow based. There is a couple of pink shades in there, um, but personally, um, I have a, a ranging between a yellow and a pink undertone. Um, I don't think I'm perfect one or the other. Um, 
um, and but then I find even with that little tiny bit of pink undertone that I have I can't wear a pink toned foundation it just makes me look really horrible um, and really quiet it always makes me look really hot and flustered because that pink comes through the foundation and I'm constantly like, yeah, looking hot and flustered. So I always go a yellow toned foundation um, and the shade I'm going to go today is shade 104, um, which is perfect for my skin tone at the moment. I have a little bit of fake tan left over from the weekend, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix that. Best thing about these bottles is that they're airtight bottles, so they actually pump and release the air out of them as you're pumping away. So be sure not to open the top up here because if you open the top you're going to let all the air back into the bottle and you're not going to be able to use the pump correctly um i will explain now before we get going as well that i have two young boys um ages five and three so they may pop into the video at any point in time or come screaming up those stairs that are beside me um, from where they're doing some art and craft while I'm, um, mum is doing a video and also um, my little puppy Lolly she might poke her head in the video she just tried to jump up on my lap so we'll see how we go about getting through the video without any interruptions so the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to get my foundation I'm actually going to pump a little bit on the back of my hand first um, I always love using the back of my hand. You can use all your mixing boards and so forth as well. Um, if that's what you got, you got like your little steel trays that you can use to mix with. I love the back of my hand. Um, I even use the back of my hand in studio purely because sometimes the warmth from my hand can actually help warm up the product that I'm just about to be ap applying, particularly your like your brow pomades and things like that as well. It can help warm them up, make it a little bit easier to get onto the skin as well. Used by a trusty beauty sponge. This is a DAC beauty sponge, so I'm sorry. It's feral. It's disgusting. Um, I've had this one forever and a day, um, but I just constantly keep washing it. So I'm going to start, and I'm actually going to start on this side of my face um, and go right ahead. So I'm just going to dip some of my sponge into that product, and I actually like to work it into that sponge a little bit. So you can see I'm starting to move it around a little bit, start getting it into the sponge ready to go, and then I just pounce onto my face. So I just, as I'm going ahead and pushing this into my skin, I'm not dragging, I'm not moving, um, I'm essentially just pushing or pouncing, patting, um, any of those types of motions. I would like to just explain too that a beauty blender or a beauty sponge, uh, beauty blender is a brand, beauty sponge is the actual name for them, actually needs to be used damp. So a lot of clients come in and they say, oh, I have this amazing beauty sponge at home and... I use it but it's so hard and it doesn't do what yours does first is first it needs to be damp damp doesn't mean like just run it under the tap and squeeze it um, damp means you need to get it under there and you need to squeeze the water wait for it to expand squeeze the water out ensure that it is wet all the way through to the core wring it out as tight as you possibly can and then I even go over with my little hand towel just one more time um, to squeeze that excess water out to ensure that it's damp and you can see as I'm pushing the sponge is actually just kind of like molding to the shape of my face and getting that foundation in you can do hard soft anything that sort of suits you so I'm just gonna move along to my chin now that I've done the side of my face this foundation is brilliant. You can use a brush or a sponge. Um, I strongly believe that a brush is probably more for your sheer to medium coverage and then your sponge is essentially for your full coverage. Yes, you can use a sponge for your sheer to medium coverage as well. That's totally fine. I just feel you can layer it a lot nicer. Um, you can actually get it into the skin when you use a sponge as opposed to a brush. In studio, I do use a brush on clients first. That just helps me get around those little crevices of the nose um, up into the hairline. And it helps me blend it out a little bit easier um, as I can't essentially ask clients to, well, I could, but it's not very flattering, ask them to straighten out their nose or pull their chin out nice and tight. So, all right, so I'm just gonna speed up.
so my face is on um, and all blended in. Um, it is super duper full coverage, so you could probably see underneath my eyes just here. There's still that slight discoloration. I did go over the top a little bit on my, the tops of my eyes. I have a really um, a big eyelid space, so I do like to just dust over that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I could just say it's all nice and blended in. Um, I went down my neck a little bit as well, right into my hairline. As you can see, it's brilliant. It's already starting to dry down, so it's um, super brilliant coverage. All right, so all that foundation is on, set, into my face, ready to go. Pushed in, just using my good old trusty beauty sponge. Um, back, like I was saying before, you can use a brush to get it on. Um, I believe you get a fuller coverage by using a beauty sponge. It just helps push it in that little bit nicer as well. Definitely use your beauty sponge to get it in to get that fuller coverage. The next stage I'm going to be doing is concealing. Now, when I conceal, I would like to also remove some of the discoloration that's around my eyelids and like underneath my eyes, on top of my eyelids. You can see I have some really quite dark circles in my eyes and some really uneven skin tone on my eyelids. So I can use concealer for that. I also like using concealer to highlight those areas. So, i.e. Instagram concealing. Now, it's not for everybody. Uh, you don't have to do it the Instagram way. It is just a new trend that's coming about but at the same time too it actually works so I'm definitely not one for saying don't do it this way or do it this way you do it however you please if you want to conceal your whole face over the top of your foundation go for it that's your choice do whatever there's definitely no right and no wrong so what I'm going to do first is I actually have two here um, the first one will be my Maybelline fit me concealer so I actually really like this concealer because it actually uh, is a really great color for my skin tone at the moment um, but because I have super full coverage foundation on I need a little bit more coverage than the Maybelline fit me um, so I'm just going to go ahead with some of my Tarte Shape Tape um, and this is just a tiny little bit too dark for me so I do need to um, use that Maybelline to get the correct color so I'm going to Instagram conceal today um, much to the disgust of some people but that's okay it is what it is so I'm just going to Brush a little bit of this coverage underneath my eyes and you can already see the discoloration is already disappearing. Um, it might appear to be a lot but I haven't actually double dipped back in again. I've just used whatever's on the, the brush and you'll be able to see a massive, massive difference. So actually, here's something. I'm going to do one eye for you and I'm going to show you what concealer actually does. I'm just going to put some of this Maybelline on because I need that lighter, that lighter colour mixed through it. Uh, in my little pot here, it's not the actual correct pot. Um, this is just some RCMA loose uh, powder, the translucent powder that they have. I prefer this one um, because I can get quite crepey underneath my eyelids when I use concealer and powder. So what I mean by crepey, I mean like really quite... Uh, wrinkled underneath my eyelids um, and it can go like a really uh, texturized almost like crepe paper I guess that's where the creping comes from but it can go really quite crepey under my eyes and I find that the RCMA um, actually doesn't do it as bad as some other powders so that's why I tend to use this one back to my beauty sponge and I'm just going to blend that in now not at one point will I ever drag this again I am simply just patting I go over my eyelids as well and push that product in, avoiding my eyebrows. I don't want to cover them over. I actually have my brows tattooed, so I definitely don't want to cover any of that tattoo. It helps me shape them. All right. Now, I'm very quickly going to set that area, so I'm going to grab my beauty sponge that is damp, and it's going to help me pick up the product, and I'm going to grab some of that product. So just on my beauty sponge, and I'm going to push it in. And just push that powder in to set that area over the top of my eyelid. I essentially don't bake. Um, as you would have heard, I can go in later and explain what all these definitions and terms and so forth actually mean. But I don't bake. I just push the powder in. I only pick up enough that I would need to do that. Now, please excuse my eye that I've just pushed and closed over. But now you can see a very big difference. Yes, it's closed over my eye tiny, but only because I've pushed that powder in. Ugh. Um, but you can, can see, I can definitely, I've concealed all underneath here. I've added one color to it. Um, and then I can go over and do my eyeshadow and so forth like that. They're, all the discoloration's gone on my eyelids. Um, and I'm ready for a perfect base. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed through the other side.
Okay, so I've set underneath my eyes, set the tops of my eyelids with my loose um, translucent powder that I have here, the little RCMA that um, I have. I prefer that one, like I was saying. I like it because it doesn't give me that crepiness underneath my eyes that a lot of other powders do. So the next step I'm going to go along with, um, which is one of the, which is actually the final stage of my uh, flawless foundation routine, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that um, with just a, a a translucent powder. I do prefer a pressed powder when it comes to setting the rest of the face. I just find it doesn't deposit too much on the face. You don't end up with that full powdery face. Um, and yeah, it's just a little bit smoother on the face. So this is just a really light colored um, powder that I go all over my face with. I just pick up my really big fluffy blender, my big fluffy face blender brush that I have here. Um, and then this is a DAC powder brush as well that I have here. So I'm just going to lightly pick that up and I'm actually going to push that into the skin um, as opposed to a dragging motion again. And I'm going to push that into the skin. You don't need too much product. When I pick it up, in all honesty, this is how I pick it up. Done. Not swirling around, picking up endless amounts of powder. Um, and I just push that into the skin. I don't like to over powder my face. I do... Um, swell it around as it gets down to my neck because it just helps me blend it in uh, to the rest of my neck and so forth. So if I was uh, wearing my hair up, I would definitely go up behind my ears, but my hair is down today, so I don't need to go around that far just to get rid of that discoloration and make sure it's all one color as well. You don't want 15 different colors from the top of your head right down to your chest. Okay, so that brings us now to the very end of the Flawless Foundation routine. And as you can see, it is very super duper full coverage um there's not much in between everything seems to be set um and ready to go so as you can see i was just pulling my nose down to make sure it's all in there my eyebrows need to be done i do need to add a little bit of warmth and color to the face and i'm going to be doing that with one of dac's new products that is just about to be launched um so i will get that video to you very shortly um please excuse me like i said as I'm starting to get used to doing all of this filming, it is very unusual sitting here talking to a camera with nobody to ask you questions uh, or give you any kind of feedback. So I hope you like these. If you do like these, don't forget it is a YouTube, proper YouTube channel. So you do need to like uh, like this video and you need to subscribe to my actual channel to ensure that um, I know that you're happy with this content um, and that you're enjoying it. And I'm actually doing something that you guys want to see as opposed to just doing whatever. So thank you for tuning in, having a look at my flawless foundation routine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish my face as I'm going out this afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my makeup off camera. Uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you along in my next video. Bye!